Hi there. I've started saying hi there instead of good evening because I guess that not everybody's watching this in the evening, although we're usually filming in the evening. Um, had quite a few comments and what I wanted to do was just talk a little bit about the very beginning of making a model layout, which is the planning. Now, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, but in the UK, the view seems to be that you've got to spend ages and ages and ages planning, using computer software and templates, and then working out what you want. I even saw one poor young man who, who on a forum had said that he'd got some old track and train of his dad's and how did he make a layout? And the advice he was given was, well, what period are you going to do and what time and what area? Completely ignoring the fact that the lad said, He's got a few trains and some track, how does he build a layout? And all he wanted somebody to do was say, do an oval with the sidings here. So I wanted to um, talk a little bit about how this became planned, because when you look at it, it looks like it's quite complicated and it must have taken a lot of planning. This was built using the same planning technique that we used to build Greenhill Hall. That is, we didn't plan it. It evolved as ideas came to us. Now, firstly, I'm lucky I can do that because we more or less freelance. So the way I start, I go right back to the beginning, which was what space do I have available? And the space I had available is this, and it's just over five feet long by just over a foot wide. So that's the size of my layout. Regardless of what I might want, that's how much space I've got. And I think that's a much better place for you to start. Find where, not only where you can build it, but where can you store it? It's all very well building. I built several big layouts and then realized I hadn't got literally anywhere I could put them. So start with the space you've got. I was then quite fortunate. I knew that I'd got some one foot by four foot and I some extra bits here and it's supported. It's all come out of a skip. And I've made a five and a bit foot by one foot. Now I could have made it a couple of inches wider, but I had a piece of one foot wide board out of a skip. So why spend money? If I'd wanted to throw money at it, I could have bought a wider board admittedly, but this is all about keeping things cheap. So I now know that that's the area I've got. What I wanted was an end to end to recreate, so end, harbour, to end, if you like, terminus or main station. And that's what I wanted in my layout. So I started by designing it straight, realised that was a bit boring, then, Having read online, I got the idea from someone of doing a diagonal. This changes the whole tone of the layout, as well as giving you the triangle for the harbour. Much nicer than having just a straight edge and a cutout. So initially, that's what it was going to be, round the edge and into the station. And this was just going to be some hills. Then I saw on eBay this little bridge. It needed a repair, um, only cost me a couple of quid. Always wanted a bridge and a river on my layout. So the only place I could get a bridge in is here. That then gives me the river. So I've now got the railway and the river. I then had the idea of running off of here a little branch line. And that was going to go to a wharf or something like that. And I love that because that's a branch line off my branch line. And we've now got a really nice little branch line. And then one day, having a quick play with this part of the layout, I realised I could get a spur off here. But oh god, that's not going to work because of the river. And of course, I left it there. I then started building my hill. Built my hill using this cheap cardboard out of a skip. And of course, suddenly realised I could take the track from there up to here, up an incline. I love inclines, so that wasn't even a second thought. I just put the track in. I've got some stools photos I'll put on the last video we do where I've played with about three different track layouts here. But I didn't mind, I knew I'd then got this. So at no point was this planned in having a hill, a river, and in, uh, 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 an incline up to another station. That's all evolved as the layout's gone along. The best thing to do is have a rough idea in your head of what you'd like on your layout. That way, when I saw these rock faces in Richards, the second hand shop. Again, I didn't even hesitate, I bought them. Now, they, they look absolutely fabulous there. I know the geologists amongst you are gonna say, yeah, but what's with all the gaps and everything? That's not the way I model. They were £1.50. I needed some kind of rocks around the back of my station because the idea is that this is a, a difficult to get to port, which is why it's got the railway. So I can then also 
just get things that I think will fit. This is, you'll probably see, is about the third idea I've had on the station, but I quite like this one. Um, would have been an idea if I'd decided before I cut the grass sheet though. So the only drawback with this hoofing it and making it up on the fly approach is you do occasionally need to change things. Now, as an example, I've actually laid this bit of track three times because I'd put the roof on and then realized that in there was the best place for the power feed, laid this, then realized that I needed to put the point somewhere different and laid it again. But of course, one of the great things about using this felt uh, as track underlay is it's really no problem to change the track. It's no problem at all. So the other idea about having concepts is then when I saw these second hand, the church and the little footbridge, straight away I could see where I could use them on the layout and they just get bought. So again, no intention, never at any point did I have the three bridges there. Another example is I've always wanted a factory a siding on one of my layouts. So again, once I saw this on eBay, relatively cheaply, about five pound, I just had to have it and then find a place for it on the layout. As an example also, uh, this was 25p <laughs> in a model railway shop. So what do you do? It's 25p, you've got to buy it. I love it, it's going there as a parcels office. This was, an, I don't think I even paid for that. It's the remains of a Metcalf goods shed. That'll be painted up and made to look fit in. Um, this was a little gateway again 50p and I'm toying with the idea of using that for the track to go out underneath it and this to be the overhead signal box which I think would be a really novel idea so you can see that would look quite good same with the water tower yes I have bought some bits that I won't use the big station building in the engine shed but they didn't cost me much and they'll get used on other layouts so this is possibly going to be the way it's going to finish I've still got to play with the station a little bit, but I've just got this off of eBay um, and I'm quite pleased with it. So we may well use that. So hopefully what you can see is that what I think is quite a nice imaginative layout with a lot going on was never actually planned beyond some rough concepts of what I wanted uh, end to end harbour. And I've then been able to go out and source what I need to build it. Yes, it's not finalised. The top of the hill still needs some planning. The end of the station throat on the harbour does, but it still works very well. Uh, little things like the church tower, I don't know if we can get that from here. The watchtower on the hill, that again was a chance purchase, but you know, once you've got the concept in your head, you can see how it looks. So please don't feel you've got to spend huge amounts of time um, getting computer programs and bits of paper and all that. At the end of the day, start with what space do you have and work from there. Because there's no point building a layout that can't be stored anywhere, can't be put anywhere. The other reason this is handy, it's only a foot wide, is directly above it, I don't know if we can film up there, is the top of these units. And those units are just over a foot wide, which means that when I finish with this, it just goes straight up on the unit, out of everybody's way. Another thing, um, some of you will have seen my earlier videos, this controller has turned out to be a godsend because it's the only uh, controller that works the Kato chassis properly. Uh, again, just a little cheap little purchase. it's a nice Mahano one. It's a nice shunting one because it's got a click feature. It clicks and it goes one way, you come back to a stop, you click it and it runs the other. So it's ideal for shunting. I suddenly realised it'd be lovely if I could set it into the worktop somewhere so the whole thing's self-contained. But then it dawns on me last night, I'll just simply mount it on the front there and then I can use it nice and easily to shunt my wagons up and down and it will be a lovely self-contained layout. So as always, like, comment or subscribe. We're picking up a few comments. I'd really like to know if people find this helpful or not, um, particularly this idea of not over planning it. Um, really interested to know what you think. Like, comment or subscribe. And a big thank you to the over 30 of you who've already subscribed. I'm really uh, chuffed about that. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.